Yeah, it is still me, your teacher, Charles Barton Warinda, who is here to ensure that uh, biology becomes very easy. You find it very easy to understand, you find it very easy to, uh, to read and so on. By the way, for your information, um, uh, there is a book, there is a book that I'm having, this book that you are seeing here. This book, I have a book which is called the Advanced Biology Demystified, where all the things that we have been studying, the content of all the books that we have, of all the things that we have been studying in these episodes is summarized in a very good way that you read and make sure that you understand everything. So please make sure you look out for this book around, around town, or if not, you can inbox me, you can WhatsApp me, and, and, I, and, and I, I deliver it to you directly, whether in large amounts in case you are a teacher for your students or an individual in case you are a student in particular. So please look out for that book and, uh, and uh, get more other details about all these things that we have studied about in a very precise and a very understandable way. In this episode, we have been looking at, at histology as a subtopic, and in this case, in this episode now, I am going to look at the areola, areola tissue. Histology has been, has been a series that we have been looking at, but in this episode, particularly, we are going to expound more on areola tissue now. Areola tissue is an example, or is a type of a connective tissue. In the previous episode, we, we broke down the whole of connective tissue. Please, if you, have, if you have not watched it, go and check it out and see how connective tissues are broken down. So when we broke down connective tissues, we saw that somewhere under connective tissues, we have what we call an areola tissue. So an areola tissue is one of those tissues. It's, a, it's, a, it's one of the loose uh, connective tissue. Which, which loose connective tissue is falling under, uh, is falling under connective tissue proper. Yeah, so what is special here? Here, as we said, that uh, a connective tissue is a tissue which is made up of a substance, which is made up of a ground substance. So I have a ground substance, and this substance is my matrix. So in this case, I have a matrix. That's my matrix. And this matrix, this is the matrix, or what we are also calling the ground what? The ground substance. Now, we are saying that within this matrix, we find there, now I'm describing a real tissue. That's what I'm describing here now. In this matrix, we find there, different cells and fibers. Now, if I can begin from the fibers, these are the fibers I can put here. So I have fibers which are like this. We have got fibers which are like that, like that. These are fibers. Then I have got also fibers which are like that. These ones are kind of spaced. Now, these are two, 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 the two categories of fibers that I already told, I told you about in the previous episodes. One, this one, which is this, uh, these fibers which are kind of scattered, they, we are calling them, we are calling them elastic what? We are calling them elastic fibers. And then these fibers which are compact, which are near each other, hmm? these ones are called the collagen what? Collagen, collagen, some people call it collagen, collagen fibers. Now, in a connective tissue, uh, like for example in a real tissue, these fibers, these fibers do different functions. One, the elastic fibers from from the way the word elastic. These fibers provide elasticity. They provide they provide tissue with elasticity. They provide the, the tissue with elasticity. They allow they, they enable the tissue to stretch. It allows stretching. It allows the tissue to you know kind of expand and contract to expand and contract to you know increase in size and decrease in size. That's why they're called elastic fibers. But at the same time, we also have collagen fibers. Now these ones here ensure that they provide a tissue with the tensile strength. Tensile strength. In other words, yes, we need to have stretching, but you don't need to allow overstretching. So this one here prevents, this one prevents, prevents overstretching, overstretching of a tissue. Hey, we need some stretching, but at least, at least we need to have some kind of strength also. So these ones here ensure that there is, yes, there is limited stretching so that the thing that, so that the tissue does not overstretch, which might end up maybe damaging it and so on. Then we are saying I mean, the work of a matrix is where it is in a matrix, it is where this is where cells and fibers. This is where cells and fibers are what? Are, embed, are embedded. This is where the cells and fibers are embedded. That's the work of the matrix. Now, these are the fibers, this is the matrix. Now we also have cells. Now, what are those cells? Remember, we have said. Uh, and a real tissue is made up of 
a ground substance within which fibers and cells are embedded. The fibers which are there are of two types, that is elastic and collagen fibers. Then uh, the cells, the cells actually four types. What are those cells? These cells are one. We have got the cells which are found, which are found around this area here. We have got cells which are always found near, attached near. Hmm? Cells which are found attached near what? Uh, near, near the, the fibers. These cells which are usually found near the fibers, we call them fibroblasts. Fibroblasts. And from the way, from the way you see the name, fibroblasts, the work of these cells is to produce. They are the one which produce or which secrete the what? The fibers. So that's why they are found near. So it means these fibroblasts are near. They are found near, uh, near, near the fibers. And something special about them is that the, when you cut their shape, their shape is oval. They are oval what? They are oval shaped. If they are oval shaped, or oh, you can also, or oh, you can, oh, you can also say they are spindle shaped. I don't know. Uh, you hope you know. You know the meaning of a spindle is something which is like, which is like this. You know. So you can say they are spindle shaped. Uh, they are spindle shaped, or oh, they are oval shaped. Uh, and then they are found nearer, near, near the, near the nucleus. Yeah. And their work is to, within a tissue. Their work is to produce is to produce fibers. Then apart from that. We also have got another category. I remember I've told that the cells are of two, four types. We have fibroblasts. Then we have also got what we call macrophages. We have got what we call macrophages. We have got macrophages like that. Now, this is a macrophage. Now, macrophage from the name. You know, these things are very similar because the name gives you what the, the thing is all about. For example, a macrophage, macro means big. Phage means eat. So a macrophage is, is a big eater. Hmm? So in simple terms, these macrophages, their work, uh, their work, their major work in a tissue is that, uh, is that uh, they are there to ensure that they ingest, they ingest, ingest pathogens, they ingest pathogens. In case there could be any other for anybody that is around within a tissue, it's the work of the uh, macrophage to ensure they remove, to ensure that the tissue does not get infected. And uh, uh, and something, maybe something that you can describe about it is that the cells, these cells are amoeboid. The cells are amoeboid. Hmm? Amoeboid. Now, what is they have like a, a kind of appearance which is of amoeba. And that's what enables them, which enables them to do the work of what? Of engulfing. Engulfing the pathogens to ensure that the tissue remains when it is, when it is not infected with pathogens. Uh -huh. That's macrophage. Then we also have got other cells which we also call mast cells. We also have got other cells which we call mast cells. We also have got cells inside there which are called mast cells. And these mast cells, mast cells also they are, they have the they also have a shape. Their shape is also amoeboid. Is also amoeboid. Now that means they, they have a amoeboid appearance. Uh, however, they do. A lot of functions, these ones do a lot of functions in a tissue. What are these functions? These functions include uh, these mast cells secrete, secrete, they are the one which secrete the matrix. So this matrix where all the other things are embedded, this matrix where all the other things are embedded, they are secreted by the mast cells. So the mast cells secrete the matrix. That is one. Number two, they also secrete, they also secrete uh, an anticoagulant, an anticoagulant, an anticoagulant. Hey, and this anticoagulant is called heparin. Heparin. This heparin is an anticoagulant. Why? Because within this tissue, actually, these mast cells are usually found nearer. They usually found nearer blood vessels. These ones here are actually found near blood vessels. Why? Because they secrete this, this chemical called heparin as an anticoagulant to ensure that blood does not clot within the body. Why? Because when blood clots within your body, you might get heart attack might get a heart attack, and that's when we affect the blood saturation. So, uh, so, so we are saying, to ensure that blood does not clot in your body, that chemical keeps, keeps on being released to ensure that blood continues flowing normally without having any clot. So the work, uh, well, the, the work the, that chemical called heparin, which is an anticoagulant, is prosecuted by what we call mast cells. And then we also have got a, a substance which is called uh, histamine. Hey, this cell also secretes, also secretes what? It also secretes histamine. Histamine. 
Hey, this sister mine, we are, we are also going to look at it in details when it comes to uh, an episode which will be about transport. Uh, you check out for my episode about transport or oh, immunity. Uh, immunity. You are going to find the, uh, we, are, we, we expound more on this, on this uh, histamine. But this histamine is, plays a very important role when it comes to allergic reactions within the body. Allergic reactions within the body. Yeah, so uh, then we have one more cell, one more type of cell. Because remember I've said that the cells are four. So the other cell that we have also here is uh, within this tissue is a cell which we call, which we call the fat cell. Now I want you to take note of how I'm going to draw this fat cell here. Unlike the other cells, when you check out this, okay, sorry. I want you to see how I'm going to draw this fat cell. Unlike other, unlike other cells, now here this fat cell here for it, it is in such a way that the one, so this is a fat cell. Now this fat cell, one something, something special about it is that, the, of course, if the function is to store what? The function is to store fats. This one stores fats. Stores fats. And uh, when you look at its appearance, or you can describe something about it, we are saying uh, it has got a nucleus. It has got a nucleus which is found near, near the, the cell membrane. Near the cell membrane. Or at the, what you can call at the peri, at the periphery. At the periphery. In other words, the, the, the nucleus is formed at near, near, near the extreme end. Why? Because the biggest part, the biggest part of the cytoplasm is occupied by what? Is occupied by, by fat. So that's why the, the, what, the, 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 the nucleus gets first or pushed into one extreme end. So that is something. And also, we are saying when you look at it, it is also overshaped. It's, uh, the nucleus is, uh, I mean, the, 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 the cell, the cell is also overshaped. Uh, it is also having an overshape. Uh, so that is it with the, with the areola tissue. So it means if they ask you to describe, describe the structure of a connective tissue, you just write all these ones together. You are saying, you say connect now. The reason that's why I was saying this is the simplest form of a connective tissue is because all other tissues that we are, we are going to talk about under connective tissue, they actually, uh, they actually a modification of this. For example, uh, in, the previous, in the previous video, I talked about uh, adipose tissue. But now adipose tissue, you find that you have this tissue, now, instead of having all these other cells, you find that the biggest cell in this tissue is what? Is now the what? The fat cell. So when you have this tissue and you have very many, very many, uh, very many fat cells, then that one becomes what? That one becomes now the adipose, the adipose tissue. We talked about the retriever tissue in the previous video. Now, we shall see that, for example, when you have uh, this tissue and then you find that these fibers, the fibers which are now, which are now too more, which are which are in excess, which are too much, and, and they are forming kind of a mesh, a mesh like network, uh, a kind of a connection which is like this, are, and they are the titular fibers. Then that one now becomes instead of being a real, it becomes now the retinal tissue. So in other words, what I'm trying to say is that all other connective tissues are just a modification of what we are referring to here of the, of the areola of the areola tissue. So. This is it. So areola tissue is a tissue which is made up of a ground substance. This substance, uh, this matrix, it, its worker is where all the other cells are embedded. Now we are saying within this, within this matrix, we find their cells and fibers. The cells are of four, four types, and the fibers are of two types. The fibers, we have got the collagen, the collagen fibers. These collagen fibers are strong. They, they, are, they, they, are, they, they, are, they are tough. They provide strength to the tissue. However, the collagen fibers, uh, the elastic fibers on the other hand, provide some elasticity, they provide some stretching. Then, apart from that, we are saying that the cells are four types, and the four types are those ones that we have talked about, and each one with its, with its importance and the descriptive feature about it. So that's what you are supposed to write down or to, to put down in case you, need, you are describing an area tissue. I hope you have learned something. Please, if you have learned something, share this video to your friend so they can also be able to learn something. May God bless you.